In this video, we'll take a closer look at these two walling materials, the interlocking stabilized soil block and the fired clay brick. We'll discover what they are, how they are made, and the pros and cons of each material. Hi, I'm Nick Mwema from Property Noma. All right, let's start with interlocking stabilized soil blocks. This is a lengthy and mouthful term, so to make it easier to understand, I'll break it down into four parts. The first part is interlocking. This means that these blocks have the ability to interlock with each other. They do that by having protruding edges and grooves on their design. This is the biggest unique selling proposition of ISSBs. The second part is stabilized. This means a stabilizing agent is added to the blocks to add more strength to them and to also give them some waterproofing abilities. The third part of the term ISSB is soil. Soil is the main construction material with ISSBs. The soil is compressed using either manual or automated machines, which we'll look at later on in the video. And the fourth part of the term ISSB is blocks. There are three main types of blocks you can make. One, the standard format block. Two, the wide format block. And three, the curved format block. Again, we look at these blocks later on when you're talking about the machines. Now, let's look at fired clay bricks. As the name of these bricks suggests, they are made of clay and baked at high temperatures. This gives them the strength needed to be used in construction. There are very many types depending on your country, but for the sake of this video, I'll put them under two broad categories, the hollow and the solid fired clay bricks. The difference between the two is that there are openings with the hollow fired clay brick. These openings have three main jobs. One, to reduce the weight of the brick. Two, to act as thermal regulators to regulate fluctuations in temperature. And three, because of the trapped air within the openings, they'll act as a minor soundproofing barrier for your property. Now that we've discovered what ISSBs and fired clay bricks are, let's talk about how they are made. And we'll start with interlocking stabilized soil blocks. To make a single ISSB, you'll need the manual interlocking soil block machine. There are four major steps you need to take before you load soil into this machine. The first step is to ensure that you've mixed the stabilizer to the soil properly. If it's cement, ensure the correct cement to soil ratio is mixed properly. The second step is adding water to the stabilized soil. This will activate the cement and ensure proper bonding between the soil and cement takes place. The third step is to oil the machine properly. Adding oil helps to prevent any soil from sticking once compression happens. And the fourth step is to add a polythene paper at the top and at the bottom of the machine to ensure that the block is properly compressed. Remember when I said that there are three types of blocks you can make with ISSBs? Well, to make them, you'll need three separate machines. The most common machine is called the standard straight interlocking soil block machine. This will help you to produce standard format blocks which are mostly used for partitioning walls. The second machine is called the wide format interlocking soil block machine. This produces thicker blocks which are commonly used in load bearing walls. And the third machine is called the curved format interlocking soil block machine. This one produces curved blocks which are used for circular homes, septic tanks and water tanks. On the other hand, you can choose to use automated soil block machines. Although they're not as popular as the manual machines here in Kenya, they are still available. They come from Hydraform, a South African company. I've left a link to them in the description of this video. There are many ways to make fired clay bricks depending on your country or your region. For this video, I'll talk about the traditional way of making fired clay bricks. The first step is sourcing high quality clay. This is obtained near rivers or just below the topsoil, depending on your region. Once the clay is obtained, it's cleaned to remove any unwanted materials such as vegetation 
or rotting debris. The clay is then blended with sand or ash depending on its type and water is added into the mix. The clay is tempered until the right consistency is achieved. When that happens, the clay is placed into brick-shaped molds. It's then left to naturally dry to remove any excess water inside the clay. After the process of molding and drying, the bricks are burned in kilns. This makes the bricks denser and stronger. After that, the bricks are ready to be used for construction purposes. All right, let's look at the pros and cons of each material. We'll start with the pros of interlocking stabilized soil blocks. One, once you hire or own an ISSB machine, it's cheaper and faster to produce a block when compared to bricks. A team of four workers can make between 400 to 500 blocks per day. The second pro is that it requires minimal mortar. This is a cost saving benefit and a major selling point of ISSBs. Three, you get standardized dimensions of blocks from the ISSB machines. This gives you a uniform look to your blocks. The fourth pro is that in most places, soil is readily available and therefore not an expensive construction material to obtain. And five, making ISSBs is a business opportunity. The target market is affordable housing where people are looking for low cost but quality materials for construction. Now, let's look at some of the cons of ISSBs. The first con is the cost of the machine. Manual machines are cheaper than automated ones, but they are still expensive. This is a big barrier to entry and not many people can afford them. Two, there's the problem of unavailability of the machine. Not many countries have access to these machines and without them, you can't make ISSBs. The third con is perception. Most people regard ISSBs as a lower quality construction material despite its benefits. This mainly comes from a lack of awareness of ISSBs. And four, they're not as waterproof as fired bricks. A common way to overcome this is by applying a clear oil-based varnish on these ISSBs. Now, let's shift our focus to fired clay bricks and look at some of their pros. One, they are a widespread construction material. This makes them easy to access and use. Two, in rural areas, people make fired clay bricks using the traditional process. This acts as a source of income for such communities. Now, let's look at the cons. One, making bricks isn't environmentally friendly, especially the stage of burning them. A lot of energy is needed, which is obtained from firewood in most rural areas. Two, the final quality isn't guaranteed from traditionally made bricks. Some bricks will be suitable for construction, while some won't. The workaround is to buy ready-made bricks from brick-making companies. Three, lots of mortar is needed when compared to ISSBs. This is an extra cost to you. Because interlocking stabilized soil blocks are not as popular or as widespread as fired clay bricks, that makes them an alternative building technology. If you're interested to learn more, I have a video talking about ISSBs in more detail. The link to it is found in the description of this video. With that, I hope you found something useful in this video. Don't forget to hit the like button to help it reach more people. Thanks for your time and for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.